Hey there, I'm Chef Celeste, and you're watching Cooking Up Louisiana Treasures, where we teach you all about specialty crops. We're going to take you from farm to table and show you how your specialty crops grow here in Louisiana. And today on this episode, we're talking watermelon and tomatoes. So stay tuned. I'm Chef Celeste, and you're watching this edition of Cooking Up Louisiana Treasures, where we take you all across Louisiana to learn about specialty crops. We'll take you from the farm to the table so you can learn about these wonderful ingredients. And on today's episode, we're going to talk all about tomatoes. We're here in New Rose, Louisiana at Glazer's Family Farm, where they grow lots of tomatoes and plenty of varieties. So what better place to find out all about tomatoes? Charles Glazer with Glazer Family Farm has been in agriculture for over 30 years. Of all the crops he grows here in Louisiana, his largest crop of the year is the tomato. We caught up with Charles at his farm in New Roads to find out how he takes each tomato from seed to sale. We plant the seed in uh, trays. Mm -hmm. uh, it's uh, called, uh, we call them 50s. Mm -hmm. There's 50, uh, you can put 50 seeds in a tray mm -hmm. and each, you know, each little uh, seed will make a plant. Mm -hmm. And then you transplant them out onto the plastic. Uh, the plastic, you know, is, is already out in the field. You know, we do that while the plants are growing, try to prepare the ground, put out fertilizer. We uh, uh, sometimes put out the poles before the plants are ready. Try to be ready for when the plants come in, they can immediately start growing. Once the tomato plant has been transplanted, it takes an average of 75 days before the tomatoes are ready to be harvested. You know, the plants start out from a flower and uh, from flower to harvest is 35 days. Okay. So, you know, the, the, the tomato will grow, you know, for 35 days before it's actually ready to harvest. Okay, now and this you, is an heirloom? This is an heirloom variety, yes. An heirloom is generally considered to be a variety of tomato that has been passed down through several generations of family because of its value characteristics. Heirloom is one of thousands of varieties of tomato. This variety is Celebrity. Mm -hmm. uh, celebrity is known uh, for two things, quality of tomatoes and flavor. Okay. Uh, it has won, uh, it started back in 1984, I think is when the variety first came out, but they have won more taste tests uh, than any other variety. In fact, they, they were dominating the taste test so much that they asked them to stop competing. That's how, oh, that's wow. how good they are. And so that's why we raise them. Uh, they don't crack, they don't split. You know, you, you have uh, nice tomatoes, mm -hmm. you know, they're smooth, they're round. Uh, the color uh, on the inside is completely red. You don't have a, 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 a on, on a, a variety that we don't like, I mean, there's a bunch of them, but the varieties that we don't like, when you cut it open, when you slice it open, it has a, a stem that's deep into the tomato. Okay. And you have that white, you know, right. and there's no flavor there. This tomato, when you cut it open, it's, it's red all the way through. There's very little stem mm -hmm. quality on the inside. Okay. Mm -hmm. Weather's everything. Uh, it can be too dry, uh, too wet, too cold, too hot. You know, it almost has to be, uh, not to say perfect, you know, but it has to be pretty good weather to raise a really nice crop of tomatoes. Mm -hmm. uh, this is early blight, uh, this brown stuff at the bottom. Mm -hmm. uh, when you have a lot of uh, humidity and moisture, uh, early blight just takes the bottom of the plant and just kills all the leaves and works its way up. So with the weather that we've been having lately... It's terrible. It's just, okay. It is, is absolutely the worst. This is the worst year we've ever had in mm -hmm. 32 years. Okay. Yep, it's okay. been really bad. Like many Louisiana farmers, Charles sells his product to the food industry, regional restaurants, and direct to the consumer at farmer's markets and roadside stands, like this one which his family runs at the front of his farm. What would be the big difference from buying a farm fresh Louisiana grown tomato as opposed to one that's been shipped in? Okay, if you buy a tomato that's shipped in from you know other states or other mm -hmm. countries, they're gonna pick them green like this. Okay. All right, uh, a tomato, when you see it start turning red, Okay, it has all the nutrients and all of the flavor there, but when it has a lot of green on it, the only way they can get them to turn uh, and look natural is to gas them. They gas it with methyl bromide. Okay. And uh, so you're actually eating a green tomato rather than one that's mature. Mm -hmm. uh, your flavor comes uh, when you see the, the colors in it. Now you can pick it a little bit on the green side as long as it has some red, mm -hmm. but it's not gonna taste, you know, uh, you don't, you're not going to get the full flavor until it's actually completely red. Okay. 
You know, the greener it is, the less flavor it has, the less tomato flavor it has. Okay, so is that less tomato flavor and less nutrients? The nutrients are all in the tomato once it starts turning red. But the, you know, when they ship them, they pick them green. Right. And that's why you have no flavor and you're really not getting, you know, very much nutrients either. Okay. As an American, it's hard to hear that we have a serious hunger issue in our country. And as a parent, it's even harder to hear that one in five of our kids struggles with hunger, especially when billions of pounds of good food are wasted every year. Feeding America is a nationwide network of food banks that helps provide billions of meals to families in need right in your community. Visit feedingamerica.org to support Feeding America and your local food bank. Together, we can solve hunger. Together, we're Feeding America. Cook foods to the right temperature using a food thermometer. 3,000 Americans will die from food poisoning this year. Keep your family safer. Check your steps at foodsafety.gov. A single ember that escapes from a wildfire can travel more than a mile. That single ember can ignite and destroy your home or even your community. You can't control where that ember will land, only what happens when it does. Get Fire Adapted now at fireadapted.org. Welcome back. I'm Chef Celeste, and you're watching Cooking Up Louisiana Treasures. And we're going to talk to our guest, Dr. Mike Strain. So welcome. And well, thank you. Watermelon and tomatoes. How big of a commodity are they here? Well, Louisiana? when you think of Louisiana, you think of watermelons and tomatoes. We have watermelon festivals. Mm -hmm. We have them both in North Louisiana and in South Louisiana. Right. And when you talk about tomatoes, when you think about Louisiana, mm -hmm. when you go, you want those Louisiana tomatoes. Most right. people say, look, we want those Creole tomatoes. Now, I have a friend that raises Murdoch's, and Ooh. he's had those seeds now for 50 years. And so a lot of people here have their own special variety really? of tomatoes that they grow. And tomatoes are very important to our culture. Mm -hmm. Think about all of our wonderful foods that we have. Mm -hmm. And when you think about summertime, of course, you think about watermelons. What's a 4th right. of July? Or what is a summertime afternoon without watermelons? Exactly. And so then when you look at tomatoes, you cannot have Louisiana cuisine without tomatoes. So a tomato is just not a tomato as well as the same with the watermelon. We have the red, we have the yellow. We have and all types. Mm -hmm. you know, and a lot of people, now me, I like that old knobby looking Creole tomato. Yeah. You know, it's just, and that's just because that's what I was ra raised with. Mm -hmm. And watermelons, I mean, we always grew watermelons. And so when you look at a staple of summertime, mm -hmm. it's watermelons Watermelon and, tomatoes. and tomatoes. And not only that though, they are delicious and they're very, very, very nutritious. High in vitamin C, very high nice. in antioxidants, okay. and very good for our local economy. With your fresh produce and with your tomatoes, you want to run this under cool running water, not hard because we don't want to bruise the tomato. And all you want to do is just remove the soil that might be on your fresh picked Louisiana tomatoes. And it's just as simple as that and only clean what you're going to use for any given application. You don't want to wash this and store it in the refrigerator because that will make it kind of deteriorate faster. So remember, clean, get all your dirt off of there, all your soil, and you are ready to use. So we're going to talk tomatoes right now. We're going to start with our first dish so we can get it in the oven. Quick, simple, easy. We have some wonderful market tomatoes here. And look how pretty that is on the inside. Isn't that beautiful? It is, and it's just all the way through. Just look at that. I mean, gorgeous. So I'm going to dice some of these up. Okay. And let me move this out of the way real quick. And what I want you to do is start spicing up. We're going to make a small quiche here, so in individual sizes. So we have the eggs already cracked. Okay. Put you some sun-dried tomatoes in there. Okay. Okay. As much or as little as you like. I like tomatoes. 
You like tomatoes? Like All right. I like tomatoes too. And we're going to add some of these in here. Okay. Our wonderful heirloom Louisiana tomatoes. Have that going in. Okay. Okay. Give me a pinch of Cajun seasoning. There you go. That was a pinch okay. too. You're, you're getting better at I'm this. I'm getting much better at pinching. Parsley. Now, folks, we are not making this ahead of time. We're actually doing this on camera while you can watch. That's how easy it is. Okay. okay a little bit of garlic and sea salt. Okay. Got it. Okay. All right. Now we're going to add some Parmesan cheese in there. A little more than a pinch? A little more than a pinch. How's that? Ooh, nice. <laughs> I like that. You like that? Uh-huh. Okay. Then we're going to come back with some feta. And while you're sprinkling feta, I'm going to chop some garlic real quick. Okay. So give me a little bit awesome. of that. Oh, that looks amazing. Wonderful. Look at these huge cloves of garlic. This is a specialty crop too that we'll do in another dish. But I'm going to chop this up real quick and put that over here. I'm going to put our fresh garlic in there. That's going to make it really nice. Yes, we're going to use the whole clove. Okay. You like a lot of garlic? I like a lot of garlic. I like a lot of garlic too. So. That's that one. You can chop it fine if you like. Whatever you like, that's what you do. Add some uh, basil in there because I did chiffonade some basil. And if, if you want to know when you chiffonade, you just pull your leaves. Okay. And put all that in there. All Stir right. that up real good. Taylor, bring me that ladle, please. And we're just going to chiffonade. Okay. You roll and you slice into thin strips. Thank you, ma'am. Okay, we'll put right. that in. Stir, ladle that into each of your compartments, and that is it for this dish. 350 degrees. It's gonna take about 15 minutes in the oven. All set. Don't let E. coli mosh with your food. An estimated 3,000 Americans die from a foodborne illness each year. You can't see these microbes, but they might be there. So always separate raw meat from vegetables. Keep your family safe at foodsafety.gov. Right, mi cariño. So like I said, everything I learned about cooking, I learned from grandmas and bananas. Shall we go again? Yep. Mix beef with the onions, the onions with the peppers, the peppers with the paprika, the paprika, the garlic, the garlic with the oregano, the oregano with the cumin. Got it? Got it. Throw in the olives, stir, season, stir again, pour out the flour, roll out the dough, make a circle, drop in a fistful of filling, fold over, press down, and ta-da! Hmm. Most parenting is hard to do in just two minutes. But two minutes twice a day making sure they brush is easier, and it could help save them from a lifetime of tooth pain. <laughs> Sometimes all it takes to be a dad is remembering how to be a kid again. <laughs> Take time to be a dad today. That is beautiful. So back to our tomatoes. What we're going to do is make a nice, simple salad. So we have our quiche in the oven. We're going to make a spinach mm -hmm. salad using these wonderful heirloom Louisiana specialty crops. So I want to take, this is going to be your platter over okay. here. So you're going to build it. So I'm you can leave build it there. It. Leave it right so you there. can show everybody how easy it is. <laughs> Spread that out on Spread the tray. That out. I want to use all of that spinach. Okay. I can do that. Yes, you can. We're going to use every drop of that. Now, this is the tricky part. When you lay your tomatoes out, I want it nice and pretty, okay? Hello? Yes, ma'am. Nice and pretty when Not you lay the tomatoes out. Lay the tomatoes out pretty. Yes. <laughs> yes. I heard you. <laughs> I, I know. See, I knew he heard me, but it was the pretty part that got him. But when you're using these beautiful ingredients and they're also tasty, it's not hard to make a gorgeous dish. And you notice we're not going to use a lot of extra ingredients. And I am cutting every part of this tomato. It's cleaned first. And I like every part of it. You can core it out if you want, but it's nice. It's tender. I like it on there, so I'm going to use it. Okay, start, start. taking these okay. and laying them around. Gotcha. It's actually making my mouth water right now. Um, you enjoy tomatoes? I love tomatoes. Uh-huh. Okay. I love tomatoes. I'm going to use some of our cherry tomatoes also. 
You know, that back home, mm -hmm. we would eat tomatoes oftentimes straight out the garden. Mm -hmm. Sometimes mm -hmm. a little salt and pepper. Mm -hmm. These I like to just pop straight in my mouth. And they are so good. Try this at home. This one you try. When you go to the market or wherever you get your farm fresh tomatoes, instead of buying grapes one week, I want you to put these in the refrigerator nice and clean so the kids can get to them and just pop them in their mouths and eat them. And you watch how fast they go because they are really delicious. So we're going to use some almonds. Oh, you're still working on tomatoes. I'm still Keep working on. on tomatoes. You're doing a good job. I'm going to grab some more, slice some more, and we're going to work these in there, too. And you just get in the kitchen, have a nice little conversation. And um, we're not doing anything fancy, but guess what? When you pop this in your mouth, you are going to be amazed at the full flavor that comes out, at um, how nice and juicy these tomatoes are. And once you taste a Louisiana-grown tomato, you will not go back to any other type of tomato because that flavor is there, the richness, and you will just be spoiled. That is You know, the flavor gorgeous. comes from our soil, the mm -hmm. rich alluvial soil, mm -hmm. and also from, you know, from our weather patterns. And when you look at how healthy tomatoes are, mm -hmm. vitamin A, vitamin right. C, extremely nutritious and delicious. Look at the color in here. I keep holding these up because it's just gorgeous. So I'm going to leave these like that so you can decorate with those. Ah as if you need any more decoration on the plate. But that's for you. Then, okay. See, I've been paying attention. Yes. We're gonna sprinkle a few almonds on there. Now remember, if anyone has a nut allergy or anything, tree nuts okay. or whatever, don't put the almonds on there. Leave them in a bowl on the side and let everyone um, do their own. Very nice. Sprinkle some feta on there for me. Okay, will do. Okay. And because I love the flavor of fresh garlic. And we gotta get our grape tomatoes on there too. Oh, that's good. That's good. That's good. I don't wanna cover up too much of that beautiful color that you have going on. Okay, These go on there. Mm -hmm. okay. And then you can use those if you want. I don't wanna give you any artistic instructions. Right? But, um, <laughs> but you can add that on there. Let me do a quick little tip for you also. While I am using the knife here, you notice I'm just looking straight at you. This is how you properly hold a knife. You have your fingers here, your forefinger right here, and your thumb is right here. That way you have full control over your knife. It's not this. Not that. It's not that. You hold it just like this, and you have full control, and you curl your fingers, mm -hmm. and then that way you can see every, or you can feel everything that's everything going on, and you don't have to worry about where's the knife. Am I going to cut myself? So now, can I have a spoon? Yes, you can. I'm going to stir Good. the fresh garlic in here. This is homemade vinaigrette with a little bit of honey mustard, vinegar, some extra oil, and dill in here, a little bit of salt. Okay. Sprinkle that nice and pretty over that salad. Look at that, folks. That looks amazing. Commissioner? Yes, ma'am. You need another job? You can come work with me. I could. Yeah. I could. I actually, I could do that. I like that. You can make it look just that easy at if home. If I can do it, you can do it. Using these fresh ingredients. Louisiana farm-grown tomatoes. Look it doesn't that, get any huh? better than that. My name is Judy Myhand. I'm an instructor in the School of Nutrition and Food Sciences at LSU. Today's nutrition segment is on tomatoes. Tomatoes are so good for you. Cherry tomatoes, grape tomatoes, plum tomatoes, and common round tomatoes are four types that you will find at the produce stand. All of them grow very well in Louisiana, almost all year round. Most tomatoes are red when ripe. That red color is a carotenoid pigment called lycopene that is a natural antioxidant. Diets high in lycopene are associated with decreased risk of chronic disease. Tomatoes are very nutrient dense. At 32 calories for one cup of tomato, you will consume more than a third of two of the crucial vitamins that you need each day, vitamin C and A. They are also a good source of potassium and folic acid. You can eat tomatoes raw in salads, on sandwiches or in salsas and cooked in sauces or stews. Tomatoes are an example of a fat food. They contain potassium, phytochemicals, folate, fiber, vitamin A, 
ascorbic acid, that's vitamin C. Tomatoes, they are so good for you. So they say it's a man's world? I don't see anybody's name on it. While they were doing their thing, we slowly changed all that. Today, women can do anything men can do. And there's one thing we're even better at. They'll test you. Try to break your will. But however loud the loudness gets, however many cheese puffs may fly, you're the driver, the one in control. Stand firm. Just wait. And move only when you hear the click that says they're buckled in for the drive. Never give up till they buckle up. Right, mi cariño. So like I said, everything I learned about cooking, I learned from grandma's empanadas. Shall we go again? Yep. Mix beef with the onions, the onions with the peppers, the peppers with the paprika, the paprika, the garlic, the garlic with the oregano, the oregano with the cumin. Got it? Got it. Throw in the olives, stir, season, stir again, pour out the flour, roll out the dough, make a circle, drop in a fistful of filling, fold over, press down, and ta-da! Hmm. Most parenting is hard to do in just two minutes. But two minutes twice a day making sure they brush is easier, and it could help save them from a lifetime of tooth pain. Fresh Louisiana tomatoes are available at grocery stores, roadside stands, and your local farmer's markets. Farmer's markets like Baton Rouge's Red Stick Farmer's Market are active, exciting places where you can buy fresh produce and you might bump into some interesting folks too. That was certainly the case in July 2015 when Miss USA stopped by for a cooking demonstration. On the menu? a fresh tomato watermelon salad. This dish can take as little as two minutes to prepare. Pick up the ingredients from your local farmer's market and give it a try with your family at home. All right, the last thing we're gonna do, we're gonna talk watermelon because it's summer, it's refreshing, it's nice, it's sweet. Look at this here, we Ooh, have our, uh, right, we have the yellow, we have mm -hmm. the, um, we have the red. red. You can put it on skewers like we have here. You can grill it like I'm doing here and just turn it over. And yes, you may be thinking hot watermelon, try it, you'll like it. But we're making some watermelon iced tea. It's gonna be okay. watermelon and basil. So in the pot, I have my tea bags, I have my watermelon, and I have um, just a little bit of basil. You put the basil in there last. So give me one piece of basil. I let this okay. come to a boil and then I turn it off so that it can steep. And then after that, right, okay. you drop your basil in there, you let that sit for about two more minutes because you don't want the basil to overpower everything. And then okay. I have some diced watermelon look there. in my glasses. So let's hold this up, take a look. Okay. One for you. Isn't that beautiful? One for me. We're gonna pour some nice Louisiana honey in here. Pour as little or as much as you like. And you can pre-sweeten your tea if you want, but look how that honey just drizzles off of there. So why not let your guests do that? And, and then... Your kids put that watermelon right. in there, have a wonderful time. Exactly. You take it, you pour it in here, done. I'm going to take this to the sink. You okay. can put that on ice, do it uh, about 24 hours in advance if you want. So let me pour all these goodies in here. Look at that. That's beautiful. Chill it if you want, but I like hot tea, so guess what oh, we're having? Yeah. And you use a regular brown tea, a dark use tea? Use a regular brown tea, whatever your favorite. A, um, an apricot tea would work well in here. Mm -hmm. An Earl Grey would work well in here. And if you like cold things, like I said, chill it, drop chill your ice. ice. If you're like me and you can drink coffee all day, Look drink it nice and hot. That's Look wonderful, at that. huh? Nice and pretty. We better taste the toast. toast. There you go. Watermelons have long been consumed by locals across the South. Hot, humid climates leave locals looking for a tasty snack to help them beat the heat. In that regard, the watermelon is king. Mm. Watermelons are grown in fields like this across Louisiana by folks like Kelly Plunkett with Plunkett Farm in Womack, Louisiana. We usually start planting our seeds in the greenhouse in little cups and potting mix um, about the 1st of February. We usually plant anywhere from 15 to 25,000, depending on the size of the field that we're planting. We leave them in the cups for 30 days. We usually plant them in the ground around March 1st, weather permitting. And from there, 
normally we would start pulling them around June the 10th, but the weather has a lot of factor in it. For a watermelon to grow properly, it needs a lot of heat and a lot of sunshine. They don't do well with a lot of clouds and a lot of rain because they don't like wet feet, so to say. They don't like their roots staying wet. This one field yields about 25 acres. About 18 acres are planted with varieties of watermelon that include truck busters, stargazers, and summer golds. Truck buster is a hybrid variety. They average anywhere from 35 pounds. Last year we had one that we weighed out at 91 pounds. It was enormous. The biggest one we found and weighed this year has been 67. The stargazer is a sweet oblong dark green striped melon that is in the star bright stars and stripe family very sweet good texture that sweet taste and distinctive texture are attributes the watermelon inherits due to the soil in which it was grown they're considered a saline watermelon and saline watermelons have to be grown within a 30 mile radius of saline louisiana in the deep sand hills, and that's what this is here. It's deep sand, it grows a sweeter watermelon than anything you've ever eaten in your life. This one farm in North Louisiana pulls five to 600 watermelons per day at peak harvest. It begs the question, how do that many watermelons get sold? We have people coming in that peddle them on the side of the road and sell them out of their, out of their produce stands like in Cachata. And, um, they, we have one man that comes back and gets 100 every couple of days. He sells that many. A watermelon of this size wholesales for about $6 and retails for about 10. However you cut it, that's a bargain snack on a hot Louisiana day for the entire family. Now, Chef, remember, whenever you're picking out your watermelon on the farm, mm -hmm. never pick out one bigger than you can carry. You know, really? Born and raised on a farm, you know, my brother and cousin and I, we would go out watermelon patches on the back side of the farm, right? Uh -huh. So dad would always say, well, son, just whatever watermelon you want. And inevitably, it would take at least two of us uh -huh. to carry it back home. You know, because they don't look so big until you start <laughs> packing them, right? That but would I, make sense. But I guarantee you, when you go to the farm, they will help you load your watermelon. Very nice. Now, folks... As a quick recap, we made this wonderful tomato salad with our vinaigrette. We have our mini tomato quiche. Then we mm -hmm. finished it off with some nice watermelon. Isn't this one is a beautiful? skewer. And we have our watermelon iced tea. Just a fabulous way to have your watermelon and your tomatoes. So remember to check us out online and take our survey at cookingupluisianatreasures.com. Thanks again for watching and join us again next time on Cooking Up Louisiana Treasures. See you next time. You've been watching Cooking Up Louisiana Treasures. Watch more clips from the show online at cookinguplouisianatreasures.com. While you're there, take our quick survey and tell us how you use Louisiana specialty crops. It's all at cookinguplouisianatreasures.com. See you next time.